Six of the eight founders that are going to speak to you and hopefully that, that you will get to meet uh, were part of GSEP research programs while they were students at the university. Three of them actually served as uh, distinguished student lecturers at uh, previous symposia. So there's a good GSEP representation in, uh, in, in the uh, groups that you're going to meet and encounter. Seven of these uh, teams actually received funding, early stage funding from the Tomcat Center as they began their commercialization journeys. And as you will learn perhaps in talking to them, there's really been a huge uh, impact with this concerted ecosystem effect that we have here. The, the showcase in question is going to run from 3.30 to 5.45, and it'll be down the hallway beyond the lobby in the, uh, in, in the uh, Fisher Conference Center. It runs concurrently with the uh, poster session that will occur outside, and you're welcome to migrate between one and the other based on your convenience and perhaps congestion, which I hope doesn't happen. What we'd like to do is have the founders of these companies now come up, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about what they do, what problems they solve, maybe a little hint as to how they're progressing. Uh, despite uh, you know, the popular sentiment that clean tech's really a tough space to be in, these companies all are sort of broadly in the space formerly known as clean tech, and uh, they have, haven't been doing too badly in terms of getting support. They've been very creative, some of them, in terms of where they've been looking and whom they've been partnering with. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. We're going to go alphabetically through the companies, and we're going to have uh, Andrew Sherman from Arch IoT uh, get the ball rolling and start the proceedings here. Colin Bailey from Iris PV is not unable to be with us today, but Michael McGahey very kindly has offered to substitute for him. So without further ado, Let's, uh, let's hear from the, the stars of the session. All right. I have two minutes to get you as excited as possible about what you're doing to, to pull you to our table. And um, it's, it's a pleasure to be back here again. Arch is building a device to cloud platform for what's called the industrial internet of things. Uh, this is the next wave of computing. And I think unlike the ones before, this has more to do with food, water, and certainly energy than ever before. If you look back at the last 60 years in Silicon Valley, every 10 to 15 years, there's been a, a revolution in computers. There was a computer in every business, a personal computer like many of the ones on our, our tabletops, a, a computer in every pocket, the mobile computer. These changed the way that we worked and communicated with each other. But the next revolution is putting computing into every object, embedding it into the walls. And it has everything to do with how we use resources and understand the world around us. It has to do with things like the electricity, gas, and water pulsing through these walls, measuring the pollution levels in the air and how they affect human health, measuring the supply chain processes and the things that we make, and figuring out if, if materials can continue to a sustainable product or have to be wasted. What Arch is doing is building a device to cloud framework that connects people innovating in the physical sciences and the companies like the sponsors here to what's going on in the cloud in artificial intelligence to take advantage of that. My name is Andrew Scheuermann. Tem and I, co-founders of Arch, uh, did our PhDs here in material science and had the privilege to grow and learn here in the GSEP community. And we're excited to tell you more about how we're doing that at our table soon. Thank you. Hi, my name is Greg Mulholland. I'm the founder and CEO of Citrine Informatics. We're a company that's dedicated to bringing together the world of materials and chemicals data and using artificial intelligence and machine learning to guide the development of new high performance materials and chemicals. This is really important in the world of energy because our world of efficiency is driven by the materials and chemicals that enable our technologies. Lighter vehicles, more efficient solar panels, better batteries, all the way across the energy uh, ecosystem, we live on these materials and chemicals and we help companies uh, invent new ones and bring them to market twice as fast. Uh, my company was founded out of the GSB, actually, at Stanford, and we were, received early support from the Brian and the Tomcat Center and have lived in the GSEP ecosystem since the very beginning. 
Uh, so I couldn't be more excited to be here. Thank you very much for having us. And, and please visit Citrine Informatics at, at our booth to, to find out more. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Wang, and I am the co-founder and CEO at Qbert, where we are building safer and longer-lasting batteries. I don't think I need to do too much convincing about the need for better batteries. Electric vehicles, arguably the future of decarbonization in the automotive industry, uh, is completely limited by battery performance today, whether you're talking about safety, reliability, performance, or driving range. And anyone who has had the privilege of owning a Samsung Note 7, I'm pretty sure I don't need to t tell you about why I need better batteries. So what we're doing at Cubers is developing a new electrolyte chemistry, non-flammable, that delivers great safety improvements to existing battery technologies, while also allowing us to pack in a lot more energy into the same volume and the same weight as existing lithium-ion batteries. As you can imagine, lots of applications in a lot of different markets. We think we found really the ideal first market for these batteries, a very high value application for batteries in harsh environments in the oil and gas industry. And to that extent, we've already closed a seed investment and joint development agreement with a major oil field services company to develop prototypes for that specific market. Longer term, uh, early, other early markets with high value, medical device batteries, as well as soldier portable power we're looking at right now. And then ultimately, we think our batteries have the opportunity to make a dramatic impact in making consumer electronics safer and uh, longer living, as well as electric vehicles more affordable and better performance. Our company originally came out of my PhD research at Stanford, which was actually supported by GSEP fairly substantially, as well as the Tomcat Center for Sustainable Energy. Uh, and we spun out about a year and a half ago now, and now we are based at Berkeley in the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in the prestigious Cyclotron Road Cleantech Accelerator up there. Uh, great program, by the way. Uh, so. At Kuberg, we are building safer and longer lasting batteries. We have a found a really, really great first market and strategic investor to work with. And now we're looking for any additional industrial partners who really have a high value application for better batteries. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Mike McGee. Uh, Colin Bailey is sorry that uh, he can't be here. He got sick this morning and uh, didn't want to pass on the illness. Um, I don't think I'll need the full two minutes because I, I, I had a talk this morning and, and basically Iris PV uh, will be commercializing the perovskite uh, technology that was developed here uh, at Stanford uh, with GSEP uh, funding. Uh, so we'll, we'll, the, the first product will likely uh, be a panel with uh, perovskite tandems uh, with perovskite on the top, silicon on the bottom. And uh, we'll, we'll be able to partner with silicon companies to uh, use silicon cells that are no different than the ones they're already making. Um, and, and just should be able to upgrade the efficiency uh, up, up into the um, high 20s. So that's what we're about. And uh, right now, uh, the company is also located uh, in the uh, Cyclotron uh, Road uh, incubator up in uh, Berkeley. And uh, we're raising funds so that we can uh, scale up the technology. And uh, yeah, we hope to have the opportunity to talk to you at the booth. Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Tao, co-founder and CEO of Kiwi. Our mission is to reduce unnecessary wastage in commercial buildings through the power of IoT and big data. So many people are surprised to find that about 30 to 50 percent of a building's total energy consumption is made up of plug loads. Plug loads are the devices that are plugged into the wall outlets, and the EIA projects that over the next two decades, this energy consumption will increase 150 percent. They've also shown that plug loads are the only growing energy trend compared to HVAC and lighting. This projected increase is currently due to the lack of visibility into what's going on at the outlet level. Information such as what's being plugged in, what, uh, who's using it, how much it's consuming is not readily available. This lack of information makes it really hard 
to contain this energy loss through these outlets. And that's where Kiwi comes in. We provide control and visibility on a real-time dynamic basis. Basically, we deploy these smart outlets that can monitor consumption in real time, stream the information to our cloud server, where we provide analytics and recommendations to building managers. These smart outlets also have control capabilities so we can turn devices off when they're not in use. These two feature features together have allowed us to get 20 to 50% energy reduction per plug for our customers. Since launching in May, we've deployed at a number of institutions such as Stanford University. We were at three of the athletic buildings here as well as a dorm on campus. We've really enjoyed working with the Office of Sustainability as well as uh, the residential dining halls. Uh, we also have um, SFO Airport and UC Davis as a few of our other sample customers. Part of what's made us really successful or made it really effective to get energy savings is that we're the only company that's been able to engage the building occupants in these efforts. We crowdsource energy efficiency in a way that empowers occupants to take control of their devices as well as reduce their energy footprint. Thanks for having us here and I look forward to connecting with you all later. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kendra Kuhl, CTO of Opus 12, a company that I co-founded along with Atasha Cave and Nicholas Flanders. And what we're developing is technology to recycle carbon dioxide back into the chemicals and fuels that we rely on every day. The process takes just the most simple inputs, CO2, water, and electricity, and when those are fed into our reactor, they break apart over the catalyst surface that we over a catalyst surface, and the atoms recombine to make new carbon-based compounds. Atasha and I got our start in this field as graduate students working with Professor Tom Jaramillo here at Stanford with some initial funding from GSEP. And what we were able to uncover are really fundamental trends in catalyst activity that essentially give us a roadmap on how to develop better catalysts. We wanted to apply what we had learned, and so we teamed up with Nicholas Flanders, who is finishing his MBA here, and we started Opus 12. And with our background in catalysis, we felt like the other piece of the technology that was really missing to make a commercial product was the reactor. And so one of our key innovations is being able to repurpose an existing industrially relevant reactor design for the CO2 conversion process. And what we've been able to show is that using that reactor design, we can do CO2 conversion with very high efficiency and very high selectivity. And because it's an existing design, we have a clear path to scale up and manufacturing. At Stanford, we showed that we could, with current catalysts, we can make up to 16 different compounds out of CO2. When you look at the, the market for those compounds, just for chemicals, it's $300 billion. If we were to use renewable electricity to make those compounds, we could avoid over 1 billion tons of CO2 emissions per year. If we include the fuels that we can make, we could avoid over 10 billion tons per year. Um, <clears throat> at, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, at Opus 12, we want to change the way that we think about carbon dioxide. Instead of thinking of it as a waste that there's nothing to do with except for throw away into the atmosphere, we think of it as a feedstock that one day could be the source of carbon neutral fuels and chemicals of the future. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ashwath Raman, co-founder and CEO of SkyCool Systems. We're developing a passive cooling technology that can improve the efficiency of any air conditioning and refrigeration system. Uh, cooling systems today consume about 17% of the electricity we generate globally, so that's air conditioning and refrigeration systems, and they're responsible for about 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But the amount of energy we use for cooling is expected to grow dramatically by the year 2050, primarily driven by the developing world. At SkyCool Systems, we've developed a technology that can generate cooling without any electricity needed and with no water lost due to evaporation. And it works 24 hours a day. The way this technology works is by exploiting the coldest thing out there, the cold of outer space itself. The phenomenon is called radiative sky cooling, hence the name of the company. And uh, we, as our, t our founding team, developed this technology here at Stanford over several, several years. 
So in addition to myself, uh, I did my PhD in applied physics here at Stanford. Uh, my other co-founders include uh, CTO Eli Goldstein, who did his uh, PhD in mechanical engineering, and Professor Shen Wei Fan, uh, who, whose lab we worked in while developing this technology. So right now, we have a small pilot uh, actually deployed on the roof of the Packard building here on campus. Uh, we anticipate having larger pilots over the next few months uh, and deploying our first large commercial installation uh, at the end of 2017. We're primarily funded by RPE, are seeking additional funding to be able to get to our pilot stage demonstrations uh, and move on there. And our first customers are really going to be in the commercial scale, uh, so commercial scale, uh, you know, uh, refrigeration and air conditioning systems, uh, with the long-term vision of being able to improve the efficiency of any cooling system out there. So SkyCool Systems is the name of our company, and we'd be delighted if you drop by our booth. Thanks. Hi, my name is Jared Schweet, and I'm a founder and CEO at uh, Spark Thermionics. At Spark, we're creating a power plant on a chip, a device that can take any fuel or any source of high-grade heat and convert it into electricity very efficiently and with no moving parts. Our technology is based on thermionic, uh, thermionic energy conversion, which received a lot of interest during the space race in the 1960s. And during that time, multiple research groups and companies developed systems with incredible performance, 15% thermal to electricity conversion efficiency, which is three times higher than comparable thermoelectrics of the day. But after the end of the space race, thermionics really didn't see much support. It got a reputation of being an old vacuum tube technology that had been tried before. We believe that this creates an enormous opportunity to revisit conventional thermionics using decades of improvements and innovations in microfabrication and in materials. I got my start in thermionics here at Stanford, and actually our very first explorations into interesting novel ideas for uh, uh, thermionics were supported by the Global Climate and Energy Project. We proposed a method to combine thermionic emission with the photovoltaic effect, enabling a radically new method of solar energy conversion. And I was very honored to be able to present some of that work as one of the first GSEP Distinguished Student Lecturers. Since graduating with my PhD, uh, we joined the Cyclotron Road Program at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, where we, where we have the full support of the lab to drive thermionic technology from laboratory proof of principle uh, to commercialization and uh, prototype development. Uh, today, our vision is supported by awards from both the Department of Energy and DARPA, and we have closed our initial seed round. If we're successful, then Spark Thermionics devices uh, could compete with virtually any engine, any mechanical engine of any kind, uh, but in a silent package that can scale from watts to megawatts. Spark Thermionics is hiring, and if you'd like to hear more, I'd love for you to come visit our booth. Thank you. <laughs>